Hi, I'm Barb Nangle. I'm the founder of Higher Power Coaching and Consulting. I want to welcome you to my podcast, Fragmented to Whole, Life Lessons from 12-Step Recovery. On this podcast, I share my experience, strength, and hope from recovery. I don't support or endorse any particular 12-Step Recovery Fellowship, and I don't claim to speak for any of them either. My hope is that you will find my words helpful in some way, whether you are in recovery or not. This is episode 79, Terminal Uniqueness. The first time I heard someone use the phrase terminally unique was one of my very first 12-step meetings. I didn't really know what it meant then, and I also had no idea that it was a term I was going to hear again and again in recovery. Some of you might have heard the term uniquely flawed as opposed to terminally unique. Both of these phrases convey the idea that many of us come into recovery with, which is that we are uniquely flawed in such a way that nobody else can possibly understand how broken we are or everything that we've gone through, and they just cannot understand what it's like to be us. Terminal uniqueness is very similar in that the idea is, I've always been different. I'll oh, I always will be different. I'm on the outside. I'm never going to find a group of people who will get me. And what we find when we get into recovery is that we're in a room full of people who are terminally unique and uniquely flawed, many of whom are unique in the same ways that we are. So we find that we're not so alone. And in fact, we're not just in a room full of people like us. There's an entire worldwide fellowship of people like us. And most of these fellowships have existed for decades. In my opinion, this is one of the greatest gifts of recovery, going from feeling like you've been on the outside your entire life to feeling like you belong, to knowing that you belong. It's one of the reasons that 12-step recovery works so well. We have people who are like us, who've been through what we've been through, and can tell us how to get from the lowest bottom to being happy, joyous, and free. As if that wasn't enough, we also get to really feel like we belong, have people who get us. That is so important because one of the worst things that can happen to any human is to be ostracized, to feel like they don't belong, to feel like they're not part of the group, whatever that group may be. We are social creatures and we are wired for connection. So I am so grateful for the 12 step uh, types of recovery for helping others like me find each other and for helping others like me understand who we are, what we've been doing, and how to stop doing it and how to do better in really incredible ways. Before I say more about terminal uniqueness, I want to let you know that I'm holding a free webinar about how to enjoy the holidays by setting boundaries now. It is on Monday, October 26, 2020 from 7 to 8 p.m. You need to register on Eventbrite for it, and I'll put the link in the show notes. If you follow me on Instagram at Higher Power Coaching or on Facebook at Higher Power Coaching, it's, it's posted there. It's on the link in my bio on Instagram, and it's an event on Facebook. All right, back to this notion of terminal uniqueness or being uniquely flawed that most of us come into recovery with. This mentality is about a lack of humility. Many people think that humility is only about going from being grandiose to being right-sized, but it's also about feeling like you were the worst case ever and then becoming right-sized. So whether you're grandiose or you think you're the worst case ever, that is extreme self-centeredness because that means your belief is that it's all about you and how you see everything is in relation to you. You might say you see things as everything revolving around you. The definition of humility that resonates best for me is I am no better and no worse than anyone else. Now, I tend to be on the grandiose side, but I've learned from recovery that the thoughts I have about 
being better or smarter or having better ideas or that things should be my way are simply not true. These thoughts still happen from time to time, but they're much fewer and farther between than they were before recovery. And at least now I understand I don't have to believe them just because I'm thinking them. So the idea that I'm no better than anybody else is really important because of my grandiosity, but it's also important for me to remember that I'm no worse than anybody else. And I mean that because I'm not worse than anybody else for having these grandiose thoughts, just like people who think they're pieces of shit are no worse than anybody else or no better than anybody else for having those thoughts. Most people I've met in recovery actually have those kind of thoughts where they think they're worse than other people, that they're uniquely flawed in some such way, that there is no hope for them and that things are never going to change. In addition to these terminally unique thoughts being related to humility, they're also related to victim mentality. If this is the first time you're hearing that, sorry to break the news to you, but if you feel like everything in your life has been happening to you or that nobody has it as bad as you or nobody understands how bad things are for you, that is victim mentality. Now, that doesn't mean that you haven't been victimized in your life. But there's a difference between being victimized and adopting the mentality of a victim. One of the best scenarios I know that illustrates this concept of victim mentality is what I've heard about when they when elephants are trained. When a baby elephant is being trained, they put on a really heavy chain to keep it connected to the post where it's supposed to stay. And the baby elephant tries to break the chain repeatedly. And eventually the baby elephant gives up because they can't break the chain. As the elephant grows, the trainers replace the chain with a rope. But by then the elephant has given up trying to break the rope, even though they could easily break it as an adult elephant. And this is because of all those times that they tried to break the chain and they've internalized this idea, it's no use. So just because you have been victimized at some point in your life, as many people in recovery have, that does not mean you have to keep holding on to this victim mentality. I am living proof that you can overcome that mentality. I didn't even know when I came into recovery that I had victim mentality, but I could spot a victim a mile away because I was going to rescue them. So that was actually one of the hugest mind shifts I had was understanding I had victim mentality. I'm not going to go into detail here about how to get over victim mentality because I have another podcast on that, which by the way, is one of my most popular podcasts. It's episode three. So you might want to give that a listen. But this idea that you're uniquely flawed and or that you are terminally unique is something that many people come into recovery with and it's simply not true. We are all unique human beings who have our own particular bundle of skills, abilities, talents, gifts, and value. But in terms of being flawed in such a way that nobody can understand you, nobody gets you, There is a group of people out there like you. And if you haven't found them yet, I really encourage you to keep trying. There are so many varieties of 12-step programs, not just the most common ones or the most popular ones like AA, NA, OA, CODA, ACA, CA, FA, SLAA, and Al-Anon. So if you have an issue that you think nobody else has, Google it. I bet somebody else has it too. You can find others like you and you are not alone. Be well, my friends. Talk to you next week. That's it for today. Please share this episode with anyone who might find it helpful. If you like what you've heard here, you might be interested in private coaching with me. If that sounds like you, then head on over to barbchat.net or you can get on my calendar for a free 20-minute consultation to help you make lasting changes in your life like I've made deep lasting changes in my life. 
My ideal client is someone who is ripe for change, but I'll coach anyone who wants to be happy, joyous, and free. So if that's you, then go to barbchat.net and get on my calendar. I'd love to chat with you. Please like and subscribe to this podcast on your favorite podcast outlet. This helps other people find me. Thanks for listening.